to the Mary Jane Society podcast, where you will meet entrepreneurs, cultivators, scientists, doctors, and inventors in the cannabis industry. I'm your host, Pam Schmiel, a marketer and publicist in the cannabis industry. I can be reached at pam at the maryjanesociety.com if you'd like to explore working together. Lisa Hogg has been a journalist and public advocate for cannabis rights in Germany since 2017 and is often seen on stage at B2B events throughout Europe because of her in-depth knowledge of the industry. She publishes Krautinvest, an online B2B magazine that reports on cannabis policies, global news, scientific research, and interviews with industry experts. Her business consulting company, MJ Universe, helps companies navigate the European cannabis ecosystem through her team of experts. Lisa gives us insights today into the current opportunities into the German cannabis market. Let's welcome Lisa. I guess, yeah, if we could just start with how you got involved in the cannabis industry, you know, just a quick uh, cap recap and, um, and, and then how that, you know, dovetails into your area of expertise. Um, would just like to hear about that. Yeah. My company is a strategic consulting company with a collaborative network of experts that you can access as a client for launching into the European market. Um, there are some of these uh, experts are on my website, some are not on there. Um, so there are more um, for individual cases. Um, and uh, I'm also a publisher of digital products. Um, it's a uh, crowd invest is one of the digital products, but we also have other projects that are in development at the moment and will be published over the next couple of months. Uh, so I thought um, before we dive into the questions about what's really happening right now in the cannabis industry in Europe, I thought if you could give the viewers just a you know a good overview of where uh, of where it stands now that Germany just initiated le what legalization means in Germany and and what the structure of the medical market is like. You know, yeah. where are you right now in in Germany? There was a very long time in Germany where cannabis was completely off the table. Yeah, like that was still in the beginnings of 2000s. Like there was hardly, there was one last standing hemp farmer and then that's it. Yeah, so it was really, really nothing really happening here in, and uh, also very few companies. So it was food, the government, it had been really cut and restricted. Like we had had way more open rules before. And then in between, there was so much political pressure um, that it really killed the entire German hemp and cannabis industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, since 2016, uh, we see more and more and more and more um, companies evolving. From Germany, there was a big hype um, in 2016 also for CBD. Um, there was a big hype um, for uh, for um, the tender. Yeah, so there was a lot of interest in that when that started in 2017. Oh, yeah, I just want to ask you. I'm sorry, I just wanted to ask you because I know you've used this term before and I wasn't quite sure. It's not familiar to me. Is tender. It's at a public tender is somewhere like a where you have to apply for a license via official public channels and then there are specific criteria so it's like a 100% fair competition yeah and they have okay. preset criteria and then you apply it's like a requirement because the german government is the pharmaceutical entrepreneur or was the like now in the future this will change yeah but they were the pharmaceutical entrepreneur for the cannabis on the package and basically the three companies that won the tender have been the producers and it was over 25,000 in volume they had to publicly hand out this contract they could not just give it to somebody yeah, yeah. so they had to find bidders and then the bidders they bid for the contract and then the best the offer matching the requirements best one okay yeah, or the three of yeah. us Oh, okay. Yeah. Here we th we just refer to it as the licensing process. So it's our yeah. licensing process. You call it a tender process. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, I just yeah because it's like a specific public tender. Yeah. Because I would call it license. That's what we have now. I would okay. call a licensing system because you apply for a license. Yeah. But that was like the, the license was tendered. 
You know, okay. I don't know, like if that is like a, like it's you maybe something. have that also in public, in, or maybe you call that a bit more. Yeah, like know? an RFP. Yeah, 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 it's a more of a bid. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah but it's uh, yeah. The, the, the tender is uh, the word that we would use here. And they will open up a license system where you can apply for a license to cultivate or manufacture cannabis, medicinal okay. cannabis. So we have uh, we have hemp, we have hemp markets, we have CBD markets, um, we have um, a medicinal market. Uh, we also have, as Germany, we are a part of the European Union. So we also have rules um, by the EU, yeah, like, um, for example, for tobacco, for cosmetics, for um, food. Yeah, and that's also something that uh, comes up uh, um, often in the discussion around cannabis is the term novel food. Yes. Um, that is like a law that was passed by the European Commission um, to make sure that foods who were introduced after um, December 1969 into the market have enough um, safety data and that they are safe to the consumer. So that is a process and they change something um, within the definition of cannabis for the novel food registry. So that's, uh, and they added cannabinoids to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so now cannabinoids are considered novel food in Germany and you have to prove, or in Europe, and you have to prove they are safe. Yeah, so that's what novel food is. Yeah. Ah, okay. okay, it's our FDA kind of version. Yeah, like kind of FDA approval. Yeah, but uh, the FDA, they also handle it a little bit different and they have more direct communication, at least it seems. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Because they are also sending out warning letters and stuff like that. They don't do that here so much. It's just like they basically come in, they retract your product. And then uh, they say, this is, novel, this is novel food, where's your marketing authorization? You can't uh, market that and then they retract the product. Okay. So now, okay, so um, Germany has had this medical market, which is different here. And for listeners who may not know, uh, cannabis is distributed in the medical market through your pharmacy system, through pharmacies. Um, and now once Germany just passed this new law, is it, what is it called? Canna, canna? Canna. Can Kanji. 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 So yeah. is is that so where where does it stand now uh as far as uh the legal market? What it what is allowed? Where are we right this? Well, set? um the kanji is actually two uh kanjis. There is the um regular kanji and there is the mat kanji for the medicinal part. Um for consumers, um we now have decriminalized basically possession up to 25 grams or 50 grams in your home. Um, and uh, we have, uh, 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 we allow for home cultivation of up to three plants. Uh, and you can become a member in a grow club that starts from the 1st of July, basically. And um, so that's, but that's for the consumers. Uh, for the medicinal part, um, cannabis uh, is not a narcotic anymore. So the barriers to prescription have lowered. And um, you can say that also the finished medicines with cannabis bases like Zativex, that's a spray with um, uh, extract, they moved more to a first line of treatment. Yeah, but... Um, in Germany, we also have the fortunate situation that we have a reimbursement for severely sick patients. That is still the situation. Yeah, so your doctor may apply for the health insurance to cover for your um, costs. Um, is that uh, for severely? Is that only because I, I I did hear that Germany does offer uh, insurance for medical cannabis but is that do you have to be severely um in need of it or is, is it could it just be for things like anxiety and you know regular? um if not, like it's uh for in order for the health insurance to reimburse for it uh, you have to have used all other um, possibilities in um in therapy and you have to prove uh, that it works for the individual patient and that they are um no side or less side effects than benefits yeah so the benefit needs to outweigh the side effects 
um, and they really need to argue for it and also oftentimes prove that there is enough um, scientific evidence also that it's um, and indicated in that area and useful. And that's when you get it reimbursed. It's a very difficult process. Um, even before we had many self-paying patients, at the moment there is a big discussion ongoing actually in Germany about pseudo patients, yeah, because the, the barriers lowered. What kind of people patients? pseudo pseudo I don't oh, know, pseudo, like pseudo, pseudo, oh, pseudo patient. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And but it's uh, actually, in my opinion, this is a ridiculous discussion um, because um, like it's stigmatizing the people and uh, implicating um, that uh, they are uh, abusing the system also to a certain extent. Um, and uh, like we have uh, we have a lot of private uh, prescriber clinics here in uh, Germany because of the situation that many of the local doctors still have the THC uh, um, barrier in their mind and they don't want to work with cannabis. So there have been many private clinics coming up. Uh -huh. um, and then it's uh, all online and then they send it to a pharmacy and the pharmacy sends you your medicine home. Yeah. Um, so what, how do you, how do you, uh, doesn't a doctor or a, some sort of medical person have to? Yes, yes, it's a doctor, but it's an online doctor. Oh, oh, so they don't have to go to, so it's more accessible to, to the general public instead of having yeah. to visit their doctor. Yeah, and most likely your doctor is not very open towards cannabis. So it's like they will most likely send you away and be like, no, you're a drug addict, please go away. Yeah, yeah. Please, yeah. Please so that's the kind path. of the system. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. the system that's set up here. It's it's the, they distribute medical cards, um, and you basically just go online and say, "I have anxiety. I need to have, you know, I need cannabis," and they give you it your. Should be, it, it should be available, and it, it. I think it's actually good that there are doctors if they really take care of the patient and help with the uh, with the self medication. Yeah, because that's also one of the reasons I think that. Um, psychosis and those things happen a lot is uh, like because self-medication gone wrong um, people don't have the proper uh, support they maybe have the wrong um, type of cultivar that doesn't uh, match what they're really looking for or that makes them maybe more anxious or something and then yeah. they have like a full-on blown panic attack they have a bad experience if you could uh, assist that through a doctor or a medical professional that definitely adds some better added benefit um the other uh, thing is that um, besides from home cultivation and becoming a member in the club from the 1st of July onwards, which are both high barrier, if you think of it like a grow, plant needs to grow and, uh, oh. um, and the club also needs to grow the cannabis still. Um, so it takes a little bit of time till a steady supply is there. So going to the doctor and getting like a prescription is the lowest accessible barrier because they did not fully legalize cannabis in a commercial way. So I can only say to everybody who's complaining about abusing the system, it's your fault because we didn't go on full commercial uh, model and the commercial model like is nothing that anybody should be scared of because it's like it doesn't have to be hyper capitalistic like there are also variances in how capitalistic or how commercial you make your commercial model. So it's like, I think this is a little bit um, all pulled out of context, this entire discussion. But again, it's so emotional. Like you have these pseudo patients and like uh, then like the, the stoners who just want to legalize. Like it's so such a ridiculous discussion. Um, I know we're going through it here. I know. Yeah. I know we've been going through that here too, you know, state by state, every state. It's the same, same story. It's the same story. Um, but, um, but uh, so uh, what, okay. So um, what type of uh, consumption methods are available now through the medical program? What is allowed well, uh, basically, a pharmacist uh, has an ingredient in the pharmacy. Yeah, so the, it's like it's never a finished medicine in Germany. Like, uh, um, like the fin there are certain finished medicines, but the flower and the extracts, they are basically considered like an ingredient for the pharmacy. Yeah, for magistral preparations, that's what it's called, like uh, magistral rezepturen, and there are different 
kinds of recipes that a pharmacist can make with them. And there are some standardized recipes, but in, uh, in practical theory, every doctor, they could also write something specific and they can have, for example, extracts made of flowers, of specific flowers in the pharmacy. Like we have some very, uh, very awesome pharmacists here who are also willing to take this to the next level. But basically you have to see it as an ingredient within the pharmacy at the moment, uh, just because of the fact that there are not uh, many yeah. finished medicines. Yeah, also because of the research backlog that was caused by prohibition. Yeah, so yes. Um, <laughs> yes, again, I know. I know yeah. the research is, I mean, we're just at the beginning. Unfortunately, the public isn't going to have access to some very, uh, you know, futuristic precision medicine based cannabis yeah. medicine, precision yeah. medicine. So that was what I wanted to ask you about because it's so the whole uh, uh, situation with the pharmacist having these ingredients uh it, it's like an extractor in the United States. Like, so, so he's sitting there with like basically jars of flour that he says, okay, you want to smoke it? Is, is, can he, can he, he or she prescribe like a eighth of flour? And then with the ingredients, the, the tinctures, or I guess the oils that they're sitting there with, are they um, full spectrum? Does he have different versions? Like, are they isolates like he's like more cbd here i have some cbg it's, here uh, like the the in the in the, the pharmacists in germany they know the best uh Bruna Vinul, yeah which is like um, basically pure thc it's a other word for pure thc yeah it's um so yeah so yeah like a thc isolate like a or a very high degree of thc so that's what the pharmacists have known for many years they've worked with it um, it's also very sticky and lots of like documentation requirements that will change a little bit now with the new law. So there are a little bit different documentation requirements get easier. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, in the end, uh, still a lot of the product that goes through the pharmacist is like the flour that then gets put from bags, maybe in smaller jars. Yeah. And then they, it's repacked because the, the pharmacy in Germany needs to do one compulsory final manufacturing step. So they have to process it. Yeah. And they take it, for example, from bigger bottles to smaller bottles and those kind of things. So the, but the pharmacists always have to do some work with it. And uh, it's funny that you say uh, smoking, because here it's, um, I have seen uh, one prescription actually by a patient that had it prescribed. Um, by the doctor uh, with tobacco mixed as a joint, but I assume that was a heavy smoker and the doctor thought like this guy's smoking anyways, like he couldn't potentially help it. But usually the uh, patients are motivated um, to use a vaporizer and you can even get it like um, when you have a prescription by the health insurance, you may even get a, a device for that reimbursed. Yeah, like with the ad additional, like a little additional pay. Um, you mean like an and, herb vaporizer, an herb yes, vaporizer? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, like the Scotts and Bickle one is the, oh. like, this is the one that is qualified and, uh, or a handheld, also they have a handheld version um, and they have a stationary. Um, uh, but those devices, they're like considered medical devices and, or like, and at least like they're at least qualified that the health insurance says, okay, we help uh, with um, supporting that. And um then uh, there have been some attempts to have inhalable extracts in vape cartridges, but that is tricky. Yeah, like there are many different aspects that you have to uh, consider uh, into that. Like I have experts who know these kind of things. If you ever want to do uh, something in that regard on medical devices, yeah, but it's very complicated and um, also a lot of liability for the pharmacies. Yeah. Uh, and, in the um, in the vape category in the vape category in the vape category like if it's all if it's an ex extract in the in in the vape cartridge like many companies have really tried to commercialize on that one but it didn't really turn out um is that because is that because of the way uh because of vaping itself or is it because of no because of the combi in the medical environment the combination of a device and an extract and uh finding the right uh doc like the doctor needs to prescribe it specifically and the pharmacy needs to produce it accordingly 
and then it's like it, all these need to link into each other or like the flower for example also um, there are prescriptions for tea infusions then the doctor uh, prescribes a specific way to cook the tea yeah and then they say like okay you take this and the pharmacy even they grind it up they put it in servings or they may even um, they can basically do a lot of things in the pharmacy but a, do a doctor needs to specifically prescribe it ah oh i see okay i see so the dip so i see so but but the, but they're comfortable with the vape the herb vaporizing technique but that's be just because you've already figured you've already put that into pro into uh uh, you've already put that into the system. So now vaping is kind of new in the system that we you have to get go through all the channels like the yeah, the, the distillate and the, the cartridge vaping. Yeah, like the yeah. regular vaping. It's still like this is just a separate device. Yeah, because and, uh, you have the flower and the separate device. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, or for dronabinol, even like for the extract, like some there are some um, possibilities in the vape. Um, device yeah that you there is a little cushion that you put in like a metal one and then you mm -hmm. put the drops on top and you let the alcohol evaporate and then you can in, make uh, inhale the dronabinol yeah these are like common common methods to take the medicine in mm. well I, it's so interesting to think that the pharmacist like where are they getting their training i guess maybe they're just as, as typical pharmacists they're, they're just knowing to combine and you said they have recipes so somewhere this be, that's what they're following is a recipe i guess yeah and like the guide like they have requirements through the monograph that specifies the product and they have to check that this is the product it matches all the quality criteria and they have to like everything document everything uh, but um, pharmacists also get formal training and they're training each like the spe more specialized ones they're also training other ones yeah like and for them it's just another ingredient that they had in their portfolio any like they had it's it's a new ingredient they also have for example cbd isolate they had that before yeah it's just that there is no not a very high need for those prescriptions yeah because it's a isolated uh isolated um kind of you know what yeah. but well, THC it's so was it was uh, more established also in other indications like in cancer therapy yeah and uh, for pain management yeah it's, so, it's such a it's such a better system than what we're doing um, as far as like we basically, well, obviously the pharmacist has to get their oil and ex from an extractor, some sort of person who's actually ex a system of extraction, extracting the cannabis into oil. But here, the extractors, you know, then it just go put it into product and then it just goes right into the stores, the dispensaries. But the problem is, is we're, we're missing the opportunity like in Germany to start training our medical people to understand this and the formulations and what's working and they're talking to the patients. So we're really missing a big opportunity by not doing it that way because we need the medical community. I mean, I think yeah, it's- Yeah, but that is also potentially a job of the pharmaceutical industry to develop more finished medicines in all forms. Yeah, so that's also a big- discussion that you have on a regular basis in the cannabis industry you have big pharma on the one hand yeah and then on the other hand you have like the old school growers and the origin mm -hmm. and i often see those two topics clash yeah but still um we will see how this all develops and i think like the more um like consumption is possible across the globe like legal cannabis consumption really then we can start pulling this out yeah, to get, uh, and, and, and really seeing, and then that it's also not getting in the way of each other. Yeah. And right. it's, um, but we'll right. see how this all develops and it needs smart people who are willing to walk the walk and to invest uh, several uh, millions into developing those kind of things. And that's something that very few companies have done. Yeah. That's also something like the governments potentially would want more, that there is more initiative in that direction also here in Germany, because the majority of the market is still focusing on the products we had um, from five years ago, and there is hardly any innovation. Yeah. Like now mm -hmm. at least um, uh, like one of our German producers here 
um, they found an agreement so they can at least uh, process um, it's called API active pharmaceutical ingredient yeah for like basically like an ingredient for the pharmacists so they can do other things with it and make creams and make uh, maybe put turn it into capsules use it for suppositories some companies have came up with uh, kits also like where you can have different like just the things like to you need to um to make something yeah make a cream or make a suppository or make okay. an inhaler and just the hard the, the, the hardware basically yeah and then you have the hardware and the ingredient and the pharmacist put this together so those kind of innovations happens uh, okay. but we'll see cool. how this all yeah that's really yes yeah, it's, it's really cool. they even had some there was one guys uh, they had uh, launched a cookie baking set for the pharmacy so basically you could cook you can bake cookies for your patients, but then all your pharmacy would have smelled like wheat cookies. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know, like because there are also kids coming into the pharmacy and those kind of things. If how how the willingness is um, to process those kind of things, yeah. And if you look at it, like we uh, we have a patient group here in Berlin, and where we are supporting and actively working with a lot of patients, and we have many patients who just get their five grams cannabis prescription. And then they bake their 30 cookies uh, for one each day, yeah, for the anxiety, for example, or for joint pain or for whatever. It's very low dose and they just take one cookie a day. Yeah, that's also yeah. something you're not supposed to do, like take the medicine and process it further. That's usually something that you should not do, but still like, or we have other patients who um, just take the flour, they decarb it and they put it on a, like, you know, Germans love bread with butter and then they yeah. just put it on the uh, butter bread and then they eat it for breakfast and stuff like that. So it's all possible. It goes in, but still it's not state of the art medicine. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, um, well, I, I just want to ask a little bit more. I'm thinking there's some good opportunities of maybe supplying the pharmacist in these creative ways that you're talking about, like coming up with uh, product ideas or, you know, business ideas. But before that, I just want to say, what, where does Germany stand for the next, I, I think you call it the pillar of, 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 of becoming more recreational or more adult use, opening up the market more? When is that going to happen or how is that going to happen? Do you think it's going to happen? Well, um, that's actually a tricky question. Yeah, so there is this uh, so-called pillar two. Yeah, so um, actually we, we already have pillar one A and one B. Yeah, if you look at it, like with the decrim clubs oh, and the um, those kind of things, like the grows and uh, home grow. So that's a, a little bit of uh, process. Um, it also looks like currently there is more general market that can be established, more research uh, will be possible through the law also in different areas that have, has been very restricted. So already now uh, companies can do more scientific research, which is cool. Um, oh. yeah. so, you can do, so this this first pillar that just kicked off, it, it yeah. opened up more scientific research because yes. they have access to more yeah, and they also have a they have a, um, new roles and responsibilities also within the government for who will decide on what. And like it looks like at the moment that the Ministry of Agriculture will decide on certain research topics. Yeah, so um, that's cool because then you can do more plant research, more food research. We already have universities here um, actively working with uh, cannabis and looking into um, plant aspects uh, that go beyond um that go beyond uh, the the adult use, yeah. Um, and how, so, about, but, how about medical research? Like I, cultivation research is ex We're doing a lot of that here too. But as far as uh, medical research, is there anything going on there? Is um, there yeah, there are some some uh, people also in clinical uh, some companies in clinical studies. Yeah, for example, for finished medicines for back pain based on extracts. Uh, but the quest, the big issue for the medical. Um, with the cannabis and the THC CBD and the basic cannabis products that we have today is that it's not proprietary and hard to protect and that they're not then they're not interested you know and uh, it's the same like there's a big argument ongoing about who uh, was the first one to develop CO2 extraction yeah there's a patent war for example going on with that regard and oh. stuff like that so th those things are happening also and you cannot really protect those things and you have, as a pharmaceutical company, 
the best thing they for them would be to identify individual components and then take them and then make them marketable. Yeah, but also here through COVID are some improvements and some accelerated approval processes happening now. So that's wait, also good. So CO2 is not, I mean, everybody, many companies here use CO2 extraction process. That's yeah, not... there's a, you need to uh, check that out. Like there's a, there's a argue, or you will have the same for strains, for example. Yeah, like for original OG strains. Yeah, yeah. then they are maybe protected in North America, but they are not protected here. Somebody's got to protect them. And all of a sudden you have those clashes and then they'll be like, hey, but I was the breeder who bred uh, whatever strain, yeah? And then it's protected in Europe and these patent wars start. Yeah, so that's um, already something that is already happening on a lower level. And that's mm -hmm. gonna be interesting to see um, how this turns out. Um, yeah, but um, for the yeah. medicinal part, um, I think like we're still in baby shoes. Yeah, like we're still like at the very beginning of what is possible if you look at it. And yeah. also of all the, the, like I always talk about unlocking the full potential of cannabis, of what is possible for the healthcare systems of the future. We don't even know yet because those next level things like um, are not identified. And those may be like um, adaptogens that is like to sustain and improve health, but also maybe some very uh, highly specialized uh, medical um, uh, things that I don't know, maybe one day hold the cure to whatever, yeah, and um, uh, that we will not expect. And that's going to be interesting to see over the next 20 years. So uh, we have Pillar 2, and Pillar 2 is basically the scientific evaluation of commercial cannabis processes. Yeah, so that's the commercial processes are in the focus of this scientific evaluation. We have something very similar in Switzerland where we have different pilot programs, um, where they have all different um, scientific questions that they are answering. Um, yeah, but here the focus of Pillar 2 is on the commercial aspect. So what could those commercial aspects be? Um, acceptance, willingness to change from the black uh, to the illicit market, to the illicit market, um, price sensitivity, maybe dosing recommendations, uh, maybe evaluating how much uh, gross domestic product uh, one value chain can bring, maybe impacting what fair trade and uh, um, can bring. And the scientific, uh, because it's scientific, the pilot, it offers a little bit more possibility. So it was actually very smart of our government to do that, because with that, we can also import certain products into Germany, like um, potentially better yeah so uh, because it's scientific and it's not drug it's scientific and yeah. uh, you can see that for example in switzerland where they just announced the importation and collaboration by with vana brands yeah and vana is an american brand as far as i know and usually you don't get anything out of the states yeah yeah, and yeah. So, and, yeah. Uh, that's very interesting that they put it under the scientific pillar and it's also very interesting to see in a global dynamic because there are more and more governments also opening up to that. So for example, in Morocco, which is the original drug uh, trafficking source country, um, they now have a cannabis agency. Yeah, And this cannabis agency could maybe have some fair trade Moroccan hash and get it for the German government and the, with the German partner. And the uh, German partner can see um, how a legal and fairly traded hashish is impacting local domestic uh, communities in Morocco, but also is getting a better product to the consumer in Germany. And those kind of things have to be evaluated. And there, I think we should all work on creating tangible cases. And that is something that needs to happen on a, on a lobby side and uh, also within the good players of the industry and the people that are willing to put down some money for initial investment into the future of the market. Yeah, because the, the people who will participate in those projects will be the people at the front, in best case, in, in later markets. We see this now, like you have to get a competitive advantage uh, when it's early in the market. And um, and if you can, then you at least have better possibilities to sustain that because you have an advantage in understanding the market dynamics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm.